Welcome to part two of the tour through COSI, the Center of Science and Industry in Columbus, Ohio. In this video, we're heading up to the top floor, which has two great exhibits. For whatever reason, there is a giant mesh skeleton hanging from the ceiling. The first exhibit is life. There are human remains in here that some may find disturbing. If you don't want to see that, then feel free to skip ahead a few minutes. Take a look at this. They have a transparent woman. This was a popular science museum staple throughout the 20th century, though they don't really make them anymore. These transparent women show the organ and vein structures because you can interact with it and make organs light up. That is Bob the Abracadaver. And this is Bobby the Buckeye, with all of his organs exposed. They have an authentic shrunken head made by the Hivaro. These are fascinating, though apparently they feel a need to somewhat cover it. These are the cremated remains of someone just out on display. I don't think I've ever seen ashes out in the open in a museum like this. These are some real human fetuses preserved in the various stages of growth. Here are some models of what it looks like in the womb. There is a human skeleton up there, along with those of some animals. Yeah, this exhibit is a little graphic. Videos of brain surgeries play. Here are some x-rays of people with injuries to bones. A lot of these look pretty uncomfortable. This is an x-ray of a prisoner who swallowed random items in order to get a break from prison and go to the hospital. And this is a stack of human body slices. Ooh, there's the heart. That's a stomach. Gross. These breakfast foods were placed in here three months ago. Over these months, some have decayed more than others. Though that waffle and sausage looks fine. This feels super weird. This was the 1850s Franklinton Elementary School bell. Now it's time for Progress. Progress is the name of a town founded in 1865 and has a population of about 560 folks. This is a Streets of Yesterday style exhibit. I really like these as they are very immersive. They're fairly rare, but I've been to a few. Probably the best examples of these are the Streets of Old Milwaukee at the Milwaukee Public Museum and the Streets of Yesterday at the House on the Rock. But this one is really great too. I assume this is set in the latter half of the 19th century, and these facades are home to several common businesses that would have been staples of a small Ohio town like this. Let's weigh the potato. This is the print shop with some antique printing equipment. There's an animatronic crow that reacts to Morse code when you plug it into the telegram, although it seems to randomly crow and it's kind of annoying. Ah. 
These are undoubtedly very healthy and efficient medicines at the apothecary. This is an old-timey hardware store window display. This is the intersection of Hope and Fear Streets. This is the Town Hall. There's a horse-drawn carriage. Then next to it, there's an antique horseless carriage. One sign of progress in progress. Let's take a look in the telephone company. Looks like they have a replica of an old telephone switchboard. Next, there's a timeline of events in 1962, a hundred years after this town's founding, and this is the town of progress in the year 1962. They expand on the Streets of Yesterday theme here by replicating the exact same town, but shows how it might look roughly 70 years later. And things have certainly progressed. That's an example of groceries from the 60s. Here's a rocket ship for kids to ride. John Glenn became the first American to orbit the planet in 1962. That's the pharmacy window. There's a retro diner replica. I love searching out the real ones like this that still exist. Of course, there is a jukebox. Here's the appliance shop, packed with appliances from the 1960s, some newfangled technologies. This town does have a radio station with an animatronic host. He's actually kind of creepy. Frank Sinatra and Rosemary Clooney for three new lives of Ford. There's a big, wide, wonderful world of new lives, new Ford. There's a lady mannequin in space in this department store window. I have never seen a Streets of Yesterday featuring the mid-1900s, mid-century era. I'm very elated with this. There's some neat stuff in this toy store window. That's the toy monorail out of the classic Disneyland Alwig monorail playset. And there's a popular mechanics cover about monorails. Here's a houseware store window display. There is a replica Sinclair gas station, complete with a VW bug and some antique gas pumps. A glorious sight. Here's the inside of the gas station. It has some antique postcards. There's a bike, a telephone booth, and a Pepsi Cola cooler.
There's the town hall again. See, this is an exact copy of the town in a different era. There's some colorful mid-century telephones. And this is the local TV station. Live TV news coverage was a new thing in 1962, so it's neat to see this vintage studio setup. You can even be the newscaster. Nine, oh, eight, there it is. seven, on the air in five, four, cut the live network feed, and go! We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. We go now to your local news anchor at WNWS here in front of Anchor three. Oh, that's you. Talk about the protest. The West Side City was the site of an experience protest at the Progress Nuclear Power Plant today. Police were called in to subdue protests who blocked a Progress Nuclear Power Plant in retaliation of the start of the plant's nuclear reactors, which are very cool. Several protesters were arrested, two were uh, threatening uh, something. Spokesperson at the Progress Nuclear Power Plant said there is nothing to fear uh, of nuclear power plants. You're looking at the wrong camera. We now return you to your regularly scheduled program, already in progress. <laughs> the nuclear power plants are set. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. We go now to your local news center at WNWS here in progress. Anchor Reed. This is still a nuclear protest. <laughs> no, what? You're not in the camera at all. Well, this exhibit is great. This is an exhibit about the history of this museum and some extinct attractions here. That is the original pendulum. The museum originally opened in 1964 at a different building called Memorial Hall, and that building is from 1906, but they moved here in 1999, building a massive facility out of an old high school building. This is from an exhibit called Adventure in the Valley of the Unknown. It appears to have been a very well-themed and creative exhibit. Wish that were still here. This is Plunk, the spirit of questions, who greeted visitors at the start of the exhibit. Visitors could tour through the Jeffrey Coal Mine Number no. 1, a reconstructed coal mine. It was probably similar to the one at Chicago's Museum of Science and Industry. I guess we can still go on the elevator into the coal mine. All right, let's go. All right, let's press the button, send. Going. <laughs> Definitely going down. Way down. Hundreds of feet below Columbus, Ohio. So we're in the coal mine now. Oh. Ah, yes, the coal mine. There's an authentic coal miner uniform and some memorabilia. They've had some really good stuff in the past. I wish those two exhibits were still here, but I do appreciate this exhibit memorializing those past features. This is a model of the museum. Most of it was built onto the former Central High School. This is a staircase in the old 1924 Central High School. This is a children's area called Gadgets. I guess they can build gadgets here. There are several butterflies made out of recycled materials. Outside, there is a small, big science park with a few interactive features. Here's one of those rotating globes on water. We can try to lift this full-size car.
This pipe organ thing doesn't appear to be functioning. This is the side of Central High School. It is inscribed with a quote by Plato. That's a good view of the Levesque Tower. It was built in 1927 and is 555 feet tall. It was the tallest building in the city until the 70s. That is the National Veterans Memorial and Museum right by Kosai. It was completed a couple years ago, but unfortunately I ran out of time to see that today. I'll come back some other time for it. I stumbled on the CEO of Kosai giving a presentation. You guys want to hear an epic story? Yeah! Uh, let's start out with this. This is our beautiful Kosai, and this, the, you guys, oops, this is you guys. Our bread and butter having a whole bunch of people like you all come in this amazing building here at the Expo was really exciting. We got to be part of the U.S. Um, consulate and actually put on a closing ceremony for their whole program at the Dubai World Fair, which was really incredible. I want to share this with you. There are 195 countries on planet Earth. There were 192 countries at the Dubai World Fair, and the only science museum that was there from around the world is your science museum, COSI. It was incredible to be part of that. This is some of our team doing one of our great science demonstrations. Um, and this is us, of course, in the State House at, at Dubai. Here's, we were named the number one science museum in this great country three years in a row. Give that up for COSI. some of the best exhibitions that you'll ever have. And which one are we talking about? Marvel. We have some great Marvel characters here. Definitely pose with them, get some photos. But this phenomenal exhibition, we can only get it by being such a strong science museum, by being voted the number one science museum in the world. But through the very good investment, and we appreciate dearly Worthless of Industries, through their investment and some other potential partners, we are able to announce today to the Columbus community, to Central Ohio, indeed, to these United States of America, that Marvel, your favorite exhibition, will be here through the summer, all the way through Labor Day. So if you've seen it, come back. And if you haven't seen it, you definitely have a chance to come and see it. And that's our super excited announcement, but this is Cosi. So clearly the Marvel exhibit is staying until Labor Day of 2022. It was supposed to be leaving in a few weeks which is why I rushed here, but that's cool it's staying. So if you want to come out to Columbus, that is here. Anyways, that concludes the tour of the main exhibits here at COSI. This is indeed a great museum, but there is more, as the special Marvel Universe of Superheroes exhibit is featured in a separate video. If you enjoyed this, then please like the video, share it, and subscribe to my channel. Also take a look at my other videos on all sorts of museums, roadside attractions, and more across the country. Also watch part 1 if you didn't see that, it will be linked in the video description, along with the Marvel video. Thanks for watching.